Hey art nerds, we are going to be talking about our final element of art, and that is the element of form. Now, before we get too far into things, I want you to check out this awesome video. It talks about the element of form, gives you some good visuals so you can identify it and also see how artists use form in their works. Form describes volume and mass, so three-dimensional shape. And a great way to kind of visualize or get an understanding of what form is, is if you're able to hold it in your hands and it has some, takes up space, that is what we're talking about when we're talking about form. So I have a sculpture made out of Legos, we have a camera, we have a classical sculpture, and these are all fantastic ideas as to what form is. So you're thinking of sculptural items, three-dimensional items. They have length, they have width, and they also have height. And that's why it's called three-dimensional. Okay, length is a dimension, width is a dimension, height is a dimension. When you put all three of those together, you get something that has volume and it takes up space. And that's form. So that is the big difference between, say, a triangle and a pyramid. Okay, I could draw millions of triangles on my piece of paper and it's not going to take up space, but only a couple pyramids can fit before I start running out of room in my house. Okay, because pyramids, especially this one in Giza, in Egypt, that's pretty big. Okay, they take up lots of space. Or a square versus a cube. So whether it is a Rubik's Cube or it's a pair of dice or a box, okay, those are things that also take up space. And it's also the difference between a sphere and... A circle and a sphere. My sorry. Anyways, uh, but anything like a basketball, a baseball, a bowling ball, okay, those are all spherical. So from one angle, they look like a circle, but they take up space. So that's why it's a sphere. Now, there are some really cool artists I want to share with you. And when we talk about um, form, we're talking about sculpture and sculpture is my jam. So let's get going. So first we have Auguste Rodin, and he created this work in 1902, and this is called The Thinker. What does the dude look like he's doing? Kind of looks like he's thinking, kind of looks like he's constipated on the john. But regardless, okay, it is also a fantastical work of form, okay? If you saw this in real life, you would notice that the man himself is larger than life, so it is bigger than a normal human size, and it takes up space and um, he must have taken a look and, at a real person to be able to get a lot of the details and to create believable form. So it actually, you could kind of see the muscular structure. You kind of see where his hair is, the wrinkles in his face, all that stuff. Anyway, so we're going to keep moving along because I got a lot to show you. And next we have our Michelangelo. Okay, I'm sorry here. Next, we have Michelangelo, and he created this work called David in 1504, and it illustrates a character in uh, the biblical story about David versus Goliath. So there was this young boy who fought off a giant with a slingshot and a rock and won, which is pretty wild. Anyway, this sculpture itself is huge huge. Okay. So we talked about Rodin's thinker being larger than life. Well, this one's definitely larger than life. Um, I had the opportunity to see it in person. And if you're standing right next to it, you're kind of like eye level with his ankles. He also is kind of like on a pedestal that's raised off the ground, but still it is pretty massive. Anywho, like before this amazing sculpture by Michelangelo creates realistic form. So it actually uh, looks like a person, has all the details. You can walk around it. You take up space. Okay, You probably can't have a whole bunch of these David sculptures in a building because they're so huge. So the big thing that we're really trying to get from here is the idea that when we talk about form, a lot of times it ends up being sculptures that we're looking at, okay? Because a lot of times paintings are flat, drawings are flat, collages are flat, photographs are flat themselves. But then once we add that third dimension, we're isolating our works of art that we're taking a look at into sculpture, which is really cool. Then we have a more modern artist. His name is Jeff Koons, and he created this balloon dog in the year 2000. And he actually made a whole bunch of these where he creates them out of and well paints them so they have this metallic and reflective sheen to it. So there are a whole bunch of these balloon dogs all over the country here in the United States and a lot of his artwork all over. He creates artwork with the people in mind. 
So he is not just, you know, it's not that he's crazy with balloon dogs, but he knows that if he made this giant balloon dog, kids are going to think it's really cool because they can see their face reflected in it. A lot of people have childhood memories with balloon animals and that kind of stuff. So he's trying to find artworks that really connect to the people that are really popular with the people, not necessarily like a lot of previous artists where they're just documenting, you know, what a person looks like in a painting or trying to illustrate something that they're personally passionate about, which might not be received well by others. But Jeff Koons is focused on his clients or his, you know, the people that he's going for. Okay. So he has a a very specific idea in mind when he makes his artwork. But the balloon dog is one of those things. And these are also not normal balloon dog size. You can kind of see the reflection of the person in the background behind it, where the person's obviously smaller. Okay. So they're, you know, kind of big, you know, maybe a person or two high and just really fun to interact with because it's three dimensional. You're able to go all around it and you can uh, check out your funky reflection in it, depending on where you are in, in relationship to the object itself, which is really neat. And then finally, I have this work, a much, much older piece, and it is an Egyptian sculpture created in 1345 BC. So that is, you know, three, almost three and a half uh, thousand years old. So it's very old. And what makes this really cool is it is illustrating uh, Nefertiti. So one of uh, the higher up royal nobility type peoples in Egyptian history. And what is really cool about this one is this is actually a ceramic piece, terracotta. And just it's really cool to see how well this work of art has been preserved, especially with the paint and everything for thousands of years, which, you know, since we are going to be working with a project with clay, theoretically, your project will be, you know, almost in new condition thousands of years from now if it doesn't get, you know, broken beforehand, which is really cool about ceramics itself. But as like I said before, this is really interesting person. It's a life-size bust. And a bust is what we call um, a work of art, which it's the, shows the head and the shoulders of a figure. So whether it's a man, woman, child, head and shoulders is a bust. Whether it's a painting or a photograph or a sculpture like this one, um, busts are, are very frequently created to um, remember some people that are nobles or royals and that kind of stuff. So you see a lot of these in museums as well in different, made out of different types of materials, some painted, some not, most of them not. Anywho, really cool work of art, really cool um, three-dimensional sculpture here. But that's the last one that I really need to share with you. All of them super, super cool. But I really wanted to practice being able to identify the difference between shapes and forms. And sometimes it's borderline tricky, but I'm going to take a look at some of these for you. So your job is to sort of guess whether or not the image that you're seeing is shape or it is form. Okay, now keep in mind, you know, there's some tricky ones and we'll talk about those. What do we have here? Do we have shape or form? Yeah, we got form, okay, because you have a Rubik's Cube as length, as width, and as height. You can hold it in your hand, and it takes up space, so awesome. How about this one? Okay, we're looking at the rugs specifically. If you said shape, you are right, okay? And if you said form, let me clarify things for you, okay? So we're looking at the rug, but more specifically the design on the rug, okay? I understand that we probably can't have a million rugs in a room and be able to get them all to fit because rugs themselves take up space, but we're kind of looking primarily at the design on the rug. And with that in mind, shape makes the most sense for this image. How about this one? We're looking at just the shirt of the person. Okay. I'm leaning towards shape on this one, okay? Because I'm looking at the giraffes, the design on the shirt. If we're talking about the person within the shirt or, you know, whether or not it's, you know, the actual article of clothing because you only have a certain amount that you can fit in your dresser drawers. But we're looking at just the giraffe design and those are shapes on uh, printed on something else. How about this one? Yeah, you got it. Llamas, other animals, you, me, okay, we're all our forms, we take up space, okay? Noxious llama. Who put that in here? All right. And then we have this one. Think about it. It's shape. 
Okay, so what we are looking at here is not a frog, but we're looking at the shadow of a frog. So we are underneath a leaf looking up and there must be a light shining um, on the surface of the leaf. And that's why we see the shadow of the frog on the leaf. Okay, so you're looking at a shape here. Okay, so I was a little bit confusing. All right, so in the description below, I have a link to a really cool video and it's by Tae Yong Lee. And he built a 3D printer that works specifically with clay. Check it out. Super cool. A very interesting way of converting technology in the very traditional form, which is ceramic. Uh, so check it out. Get inspired by some cool things because we're going to be working with clay for this project. So get hyped.